everybody, my name is Spammels and welcome back to Floating Sandbox Sinking Simulator Make Ship Sink Good Game. Coming up tonight, we're going to be sinking the sister ship of the Titanic, the HMHS Britannic. And so, without any more stalling, let's begin! So welcome to the game, the Britannic, supposedly the ultimate final form of what would be the Olympic class liners. Following the sinking of the Titanic, changes were made, more lifeboats would be needed, while on Olympic they just bundled them on wherever they could. Here on Britannic, they made significant changes, including gantry davit system. Here you have five or six boats stacked up on top of each other and these ginormous gantries can reach in and reach far enough over the side of the ship so that no matter how much you're listing, there is a limit. You can deploy your boats and have all your deck space. Hey. Built as a luxurious passenger liner for the North Atlantic Circuit, she was denied that fate and was dragged into the war as a hospital ship. Whilst transversing the Aegean Sea on her way to Lemnos, she would strike a sea mine and would sink in just 55 minutes. Uh, look out! It's a sea mine! Oh dear God! We've struck something! Wow, that's a ginormous gash. Water is flooding into the bow of the stricken Britannic. With six or so compartments flooded, the water is billowing over the bulkheads. But because it's so hot and the ship was built for the cold waters of the North Atlantic, all the portholes are open. So water's gouging in, flooding in, consuming the vessel. Oh no! The stern's rising out the water. It should be turning over, but this game can't do that. Deal with it. Now, the Aegean where the Britannic sank wasn't tremendously deep. It is deep, do not get me wrong. But the bow section grounds out on the bottom while the stern is still high and dry above the water, all causing some significant buckling. Some lifeboats had been launched prematurely while the engines were still running and with the propeller blades coming out of the water. Wow, it was a bit of a blender situation. The bow section's grinding on that seafloor, making some groaning sounds. Meanwhile, the stern is finally dropping under the water. And with that, she sunk incredibly fast, would you not say? 55 minutes, more like 55 seconds. Slamming down, oosh. Oh, that's a lot of damage. <laughs> and on that day, the Britannic became the largest passenger ship wreck in the world. Now, I forget exactly how deep she is, but it's right on the edge of the physical limit that a human can dive without having to be inside some sort of amazing super machine. <laughs> and apart from the bow damage, she's kind of intact. So unlike the Titanic, that's got the whole split in half issue going on. You can see the whole thing, and it's a very big sight to be seen. I would love to Go visit. But what if we could go back in time? What if destiny could be changed? <laughs> now, at the time, they didn't realize it was a sea mine. They blamed it on a torpedo. They claimed they were hit by a U boat. So, what happened if they were? Hadouken, Hadouken, Hadouken. Three magical torpedoes are coming towards her, and they just, I don't know, detonated a little bit like this. Oh, oh no! Oh dear God! I've turned down the craziness of the water and the blast radius of the bombs. So here in the midships, the compartment is holding up pretty well, but water is brimming over the top. Forward section is holding it pretty well together. It's not spilling over that bulkhead. But the stern impact, oh, that's quite devastating. Four, now six compartments are flooding in, taking in water. As a result, it's going down by the stern. The bow is lifting up. Oh yes, the stern is now completely awash and underwater. Would you look at that? Isn't that a sight to see the bow high up in the air this time like it's giving it the finger to whoever did it i'll get you next time i'll get blah 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 the crow's nest is underwater there's a whole lot underwater but there's still a lot of air inside that bow but isn't that awkward we've got a vertical shipwreck everybody wow is it is it actually gonna hold that wasn't intentional i did not plan that i swear to be jesus that's a one in a million sink stern section Albeit damaged. Oh no, it's buckling! It was only a matter of time. The weight of the hull is ultimately crushing it down. Bow section is still taking on water, and the more water it takes on, the heavier it is getting, putting more stresses on that crushed down stern. Although you could maybe stand on top of that and be like above the water going, I'm flying! Oh, we've hit the turning point! The pressure was too much, the stresses were too intense, and the stern has buckled. Oh, it is just falling apart down there. The funnels are starting to detach as it falls turn turtle style onto its top. 
What am I even saying? Commentary, yay. A ship sent out in the aid of bringing relief to those suffering. She is now herself suffering. Oh, the mast buckles, the funnels get crushed and she is now fully capsized. And just when you thought it was over, it wasn't over. There was a spy on board and he planted bombs as a backup in case the U-boat missed their shot. Oh, and there, that did that. Overkill, most definitely. But what if the past could be changed? Instead of a sea mine and instead of torpedoes, a crafty U-boat dragged in an iceberg and was playing, I'm an iceberg, get me out of here. And oh no, the iceberg slams into the side of the ship. Ah! It takes on water so bloody fast. Even with the watertight compartments, they do nothing. It just has more and more water. Could it get any worse for the Britannic? It got worse for the Britannic! Turns out where she was sinking just happened to be above the most spikiest part of the Aegean. <gasps> There's a lot of spikes. Captain Barnett was like, Oh dear God, we're definitely sinking. Activate cut in half mode. And with that, Hadouken. Oh, the ship cut in two purposely, hoping the watertight compartments on the stern section would hold back the horrible water. The crippled bow section makes its descent towards the spiky damned nation of a doom. Meanwhile, the stern is doing fantastic. I think it actually might be fine. Who would like to get penetrated, everybody? Because, oh, it's about to happen. Oh, you just got absolutely shafted, Britannic. If you thought one wasn't enough, have a double poke. Oh. You naughty girl, you naughty naughty. Oh, that bow section has seen better days. What? Whoa. Meanwhile, things on the stern are taking a turn for the worse. It turns out the waves are kind of waving above the bulkheads. <laughs> and they're flooding the ship. It was a slow flood at first, but now it's picking up speed as more and more to get in. Blah, blah. The battalion tries to shed some weight by dumping her funnels and her mast. There it goes. Kind of get, get out of here. But nothing would change its fate. It was too late. Much like Titanic, that stern was back up in the air. The propellers are once again propelled under the water. When suddenly it unzips like a banana. Ah! Completely flooded and falling faster than a speeding bullet. It's approaching the spikes. A high bow section and the stern section. Nice to see you again. Oh no! Oh, it's all happening, ladies and gentlemen. Double shafting in progress. Oh, get shafted. And the lower hull is nearly severed in two. Nothing says, what's the matter? Like antimatter. Let me tell you now. Oh, it's activated. The field of influence starts small, but it gets bigger and bigger until nothing can reject its impulsy pullingness. Even the bow section hiding on the other side of that spike. Wow. It's like the spikes have just ingested the wreck. How about that, ladies and gentlemen? She's gone. Oh, no. Now, Britannic had the fortune of sinking in daytime because daylight is lovely. But it would be even more terrifying if it was nighttime. But it just so happens that we have a model with some lights. Oh, let's not go too dark because I want to be able to see things. But there you go. What happens if it sinks with darkness? This is going to be the same thing again. Now, I know what you're thinking. Hey, Spamos, what's those things that are beeping and making that green light go green? Don't you worry about that. Let me worry about that. And by me, I mean, by extension, the Britannic, because they're bombs. Oh, hi, it's Georgia. Lady Georgia. Oh, dear God, it's Georgia. Oh, 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 oh. Jesus. Well, that was... Uh... Wasn't expecting that to be quite so cool. <laughs> I like how the lights just blink, 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 and they're out of here. Okay, well, that 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 was a thing. That happens. I think I'm going to call that an episode round about there. So this has been Floating Sandbox starring the HMHS Britannic. Did you enjoy yourself? If you did, leave me a comment down below with your thoughts and opinions. And while you're at it, follow me on Twitter and tell me what I should have done with the Britannic. And on that bombshell, thank you for watching. Rate, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye, everybody!